been effective. Picked up by the Raiders in the last two years prior to this one, threw only 15 passes. And only because of an injury to Dan Pastorini does he get his chance this year. Oh, that's Frank Merriwell stuff. He leads his team to the Super Bowl, and now undoubtedly, at least our guess will be, he'll be the most valuable player. And maybe the nicest postscript to that, he really is a nice man and deserves everything he's gotten in the way of plaudits. And nice men are losers, too. And for Leonard Toes, a, a tough afternoon. But it was a bright season, and as you said, Merlin, they'll be good again next year. Jaworski, it's deflected incomplete. Might have been uh, Cedric Hartman, veteran defensive end. The one thing I like about the Philadelphia Eagles, they've built the base for a strong football team. Dick Vermeil has a, a staff that reminds me very much of a college coaching staff, a big staff, a teaching staff. And they have built the strength of this team with, as you said, rejects. They do not have the high draft picks, have not had them until this last season. They'll have a full draft this year. And with the influx of good, strong young athletes, continued good coaching, and continued experience, these Eagles are going to have to be reckoned with in the NFC. Yeah, the Raiders, too. They're the only team with two first-round draft picks next year, next spring. Montgomery, short game, and Otis McKinney's tackle keeps him inbounds, and the clock is running. 3.22, 3.21 left. The Eagles will not huddle. Third and five. Eagle 95! Complete to Carmichael and a flag down as Jaworski was roughed up. And now Jaworski taking on a couple of Raider linemen and is now uh, helped by his own offensive line. Personal foul against the Raiders. Certainly an unnecessary penalty. You've got to believe stage. that Ben Dreyf is saying, look, uh, if you want me to call a penalty and protect you, at least give me the courtesy of letting me do it. Penalty flag already down. Jaworski wanted to handle it himself. But I'm sure that's emotion. The Eagles are an emotional team, and I think it's hurt them. They uh, they played a highly emotional season. Their preparation for this game, even though Dick Vermeil tried to keep it down, was emotional, and I think that cost them something today. They were, they were a little bit burned out in the early going. Personal foul, roughing the passer on a defense, number 90. That's a first down. As we wrap up this uh, National Football League year, our thanks to Commissioner Pete Rozelle and his outstanding league office staff all their cooperation kind of the happiness that uh, you can share with the winning team and also the ambivalent feelings kind of sad to say goodbye for another year it's been an outstanding season we thank uh, everyone for their incredibly fine support Jaworski intercepted Rod Martin can you believe it three interceptions today and the Raiders have it back and if Plunk it's the offensive star Defensive star is Rod Martin. He's got the hat trick. Only 12 interceptions in the entire 16 game season for Ron Jaworski. And he has been hammered by the secondary of the Oakland Raiders today. Rod Martin, he started things for the Raiders, and now he's trying to wrap it up. That will be a Super Bowl record, and how appropriate. Three interceptions for Martin, 250 left. It's academic. The Raiders are about to win Super Bowl 15. Reminder that Brian Gumbel and NFL 80 will be down in the winner's locker room. Rod Martin must have some nice things to say. I wonder what Al Davis's comments will be when he receives the trophy. Media has been waiting for that moment. Running out the clock, Van Egan with 245, 244 left. Dennis Harrison made the tackle for the Eagles. And timeout called by the Philadelphia Eagles. That face says it all. The record is most attempts, not the three interceptions. You'll remember Rod Martin's name. Jim Plunkett on the other hand. 
The Raiders not showing much emotion, but that's really to be expected. This is an incredible group. Being around their practice and people say, how, do you, how can you fit in with them? They're bandits. They're, they're the bad guys. They're really not. They're a group of very nice people. They love to court the image of bandits. They wear the black. They wear that Raider badge proudly. But they handle things from within. They take care of each other. They have fine leadership, veteran leadership on their team. Tom Flory certainly has not received the kind of credit he deserves for his role in, in what these Raiders have done this year. But uh, that man right there has had quite a bit to do with it, too. That's Al right. And you have to be happy with that man, what's happening inside him, Tom Flores. What a story. You talk about Cinderella stories. Chicano worked uh, six, seven years old in the fields, became a fine athlete on the Pacific, then a fine pro career. And now maybe the most important moment in his life. We'll find that out as well from Brian at the postgame show. Dennis Harrison again meets Mark Van Egan. And again, the Eagles call timeout their last of the game. I don't know if miracles uh, that big can fit inside the Superdome, but that's all Philadelphia can hope for now. And they'll have the two minute timeout. No, there wasn't a timeout call. They're running the clock now. We're televising this game all over the world, and there's a from the Republic of Mexico. Welcome, gentlemen, to New Orleans. Of course, with, there are so many telecasts going around the world, including this one. Van Egan has what appears to be a first down, and if so, had to just about wrap it up. Two-minute warning is given. Two minutes left. Super Bowl 15. Kind to the Raiders. Bad taste for the Eagles. Two minutes to left. It won't be remembered as one of the great Super Bowls, but uh, it will be one we'll look back on as the long shot on the board, winning it all, and the first team to ever win four games in the Super Bowl in the playoffs. The Raiders start to enjoy. Two minutes to go. Some of the Raiders have already gone to the locker room. On first down, Derek Jensen. Stays inbound and the clock will run unless the Eagles spend their final timeout. We showed you the contingent from Mexico televising the game back to their country. The other foreign broadcasters here, Australia to England, Japan with their own crew, Philippines, Saudi Arabia, West Germany, and of course on American Forces Television around the world, this telecast is being shown. 120 left. Jensen to the 20 yard line. Derek Jensen from the University of Texas Arlington. Well, for Philadelphia, the Phillies won the World Series. 76ers lost in the finals of the NBA to the Lakers. The Flyers lost in the Stanley Cup finals to the New York Islanders. And the Eagles will lose today in the Super Bowl. But what a year for the city of brotherly love. And of course, that'll be the site of the NCAA basketball championships and you'll see that here on NBC in March. That's how much money the Raiders will win. Actually more than the Eagles had they won because they got three thousand dollars for that first wild card game. Thirty five thousand a nice little bonus for the Raiders. Forty seconds left. Jensen with a first down and I don't believe the Raiders will have to run another play. We want to thank Dennis Manisha and Bruce Jollish. Our player identification personnel, Steve Dans, Jimmy Burns, statistician Joe Costanza, NBC's director Ted Nathanson, our executive producer Don Olmeyer, producers Larry Cirillo, George Finkel, all the engineers and cameramen, 15 cameras here. The final seconds tick away. Jim Plunkett leads the Oakland Raiders to Super Bowl 15 victory, and Plunkett is announced as the most valuable player. The final score.